Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to thank you all for joining us today. Our webinar today is focused on multiplying vapor processing throughput with AIT's Novell Temporary Bonding Adhesive Solution. My name is Amar Chahan, and I am the Regional Sales Manager at AI Technology. I'm here today uh, with my colleague, Mr. Robert Jalosa. Uh, we would like to thank all of our team members, including our team members from China office, who are involved in making this webinar happen. Um, as you are aware, AI technology is very well known in the industry to introduce more unique approaches in solving challenging semiconductor packaging fuel solutions. And now, with the development of AIP's novel temporary bonding adhesive with clean peel release debonding and high TG temporary bonding adhesive, I believe this is a giant step for helping semiconductor industry in multiplying throughput for bend grinding and wafer processing applications. Uh, so today our main focus is to introduce some unique material technologies in meeting the challenge of multiplying the throughput of wafer processing with novel temporary bonding adhesives and patent pending solutions. We will also demonstrate the high temperature temporary bonding adhesive solutions. Those have stress absorbing properties to enable ultra thinning of wafers followed by clean release debonding without any clean effort, cleaning effort. Uh, these solutions could potentially be used for bag grinding and processing on disposable carriers, along with the high shear bonding and low TPG film adhesive for wafers such as silicon, silicon carbide, gallium nitride, and gallium arsenide. So without further delay, I want to get started as I know time is a resource and we cannot afford to waste it. So before I pass the mic, to Robert, I would like to give a quick introduction. Uh, Mr. Robert Jalosa, who will be presenting today, has a Master's of Science in Physics from Georgetown University, and is also one of our sales team members here at ASNAP. So uh, just so everyone is aware, we will have time for questions and answers at the end of this presentation. However, please write your relevant questions down in the box below uh, so you don't forget, and if we don't have time to answer your questions during today's webinar. Please feel free to reach out to us anytime via our website, www.aitechnology.com. You can also email directly to us at aitaitechnology.com or call us at 609-799-9388. And your questions will be answered within 24 hours. Uh, Mr. Robert, it's all yours. Thank you for the introduction, Amar. And thank you to everyone joining us. Today we'll be talking about temporary bonding materials for back grinding and wafer processing. As these two applications are commonly thought of separately, the presentation will be split into two parts. Temporary bonding adhesives for wafer processing, and these are also suitable for back grinding, and temporary bonding materials for back grinding specialized difficult to grind materials. Our emphasis today is going to be on how AIT material can increase your wafer throughput in both wafer processing and back grinding. There will be a brief background and motivation and we'll jump into novel innovative solutions by AI technology. The first part of this presentation We'll look at materials for wafer processing and back grinding. So if you're attending this webinar, you're familiar with the drivers for change in the semiconductor manufacturing and packaging industry. However, I think it's important to briefly address it. The subtitle for this section is motivation for innovation, but at AIT, innovation is our motivation. The drive for higher integration, greater interconnectivity, and reduction of costs have been drivers for change in the semiconductor industry. As we get closer to the physical limits of transistor density, the need for heterogeneous integration becomes more and more important. Advanced packaging and manufacturing, such as 2.5D, 3D, and fan out wafer level and panel level packaging can offer these improvements. 
TSV technology has enabled us to place DAI side by side on interposers to improve connectivity. TSV through active components allows direct stacking of DAI for even higher interconnect density and tighter pitch. But it comes with many challenges like stress considerations, thermal management from stacking active components, and of course, processing. Fan out wafer level packaging enables close to true chip scale packaging and tight interconnect schemes shorter heat dissipation paths, and wafer fab-like processing. These offer increased thermal and electrical performance and the tolerance for very fine pitch interconnects. Fan out wafer level packaging offers a cost reduction from traditional flip chip processing and panel level packaging offers an even greater cost reduction. But the tough processing conditions in large wafer and panel size call for special temporary bonding material. So what are some of the tough conditions that I've been referring to? So there are many methods utilized for each part of wafer processing, and each method will have many flavors. If you're attending this webinar, you're an expert, so I'm not gonna go into detail on wafer processing, but I just wanted to show a few of the common processes seen in wafer processing to motivate why temporary bonding material uh, needs to be tough and be able to withstand harsh conditions. In creating through silicon vias, there may be lithography, etching, chemical vapor deposition, sputtering, electroplating, and thinning or smoothing with chemical mechanical planarization. Some of these processes can feature high temperature, high vacuum, and harsh chemicals. We see many of the same environments in typical RDL processes. Temporary bonding material must be compatible with all of these standard processes like lithography, physical vapor deposition, chemical vapor deposition, and electroplating, to name a few. The wafers may have bumps, studs, and other topographies that must be encapsulated as well. Speed of debonding and cleaning are key factors in determining the yield and productivity of wafer processing. AIT has a special focus on both of these areas with our new line of wafer processing adhesives. So let's see some steps often associated with bonding and debonding traditional wafer processing adhesives. AIT saw an opportunity to decrease the steps and the time of each step compared to the traditional temporary bonding and debonding processes. And credit to the IWLPC for this graphic. Traditional bonding for temporary adhesives may involve dispensing a liquid adhesive, spin coating, drying, curing, and bonding, sometimes with an additional curing step before processing can begin. The traditional debonding steps for temporary adhesive involve laser, mechanical, or solvent assisted release, followed by a solvent cleaning step for both the device wafer and the carrier. So now let's take a look at some solutions from AIT. We'll start with laser debonding solutions from AI technology. So AI technology does offer laser debonding materials. These come in two varieties, a multi-layer approach featuring peel release layers and laser debonding layer which I'll explain, and traditional single layer laser debonding adhesive. The more traditional laser debonding adhesive can be liquid dispensing for spin coating or it can come in a film format. It has high modulus and high TG, similar to traditional polyimid based temporary adhesive used for wafer processing. It is still conformable to absorb any bumps. 
AIT also has a multi-layer approach to laser debonding materials. This material features one layer of laser debonding adhesive with a thin layer of peel release adhesive on the top and bottom. This product also has a high TG and high modulus and conforms to encapsulate and protect topographic features. A laser can be used to debond the carrier and the wafer. Then the adhesive remaining on both the carrier and wafer can be peeled off cleanly. No cleaning steps are required after peeling off the adhesive, boosting wafer throughput. So this material comes as a film, so there's no spin coating or drying steps involved. And low total thickness variation, TTV, is guaranteed. WPA LD350 is the laser debonding adhesive from AIT used in our laser debondable products. When exposed to elevated temperatures, it undergoes some cross-linking and increases in dye shear strength, similar to traditional polyimide-based materials. The adhesive is low outgassing and compatible with the typical processes and chemistries used in wafer processing. It has high dye shear bond strength necessary for back grinding and thinning and remains strong at temperatures greater than 100 Celsius. It's stable to high temperatures and should be suitable for processing steps as hot as 350 Celsius. WPA LD350 is a film format laser debonding adhesive. WPA LD350S is its liquid dispensing counterpart. After laser debonding, the remaining adhesive can be quickly cleaned from the carrier and device wafer with the solvent specified by AIT. The adhesive is stable under high temperatures, is low outgassing for vacuum compatibility, and is resistant to the chemistries seen in wafer processing. WPA LD PR 350 is the name of the multi layer laser debonding peel release product from AIT. It also can withstand the tough conditions seen in wafer processing. The key for this product is that after the carrier and wafer are laser debonded, the remaining adhesive can be peeled off, leaving no residuals and eliminating the cleaning steps. Next, we'll discuss more novel solutions from AIT. Adhesive films WPA UVR 270 and WPA PRCL 350. So the spin coating, drying, curing seen with traditional temporary adhesives add time and steps to the bonding process. Traditional methods of debonding require time and resources. Debonding and cleaning the wafer and the carrier can be time consuming and are important limiting factors in wafer throughput. These steps add time and resources and lower wafer throughput. AIT saw the opportunity to boost throughput by offering adhesive films that release clean. The low TTV adhesive films by AIT eliminate spin coating, drying, and curing. They offer simplified debonding solutions. WPA UVR 270 is a UV release material. WPA PRCL 350 is a peel release material. And they leave no residuals, so there's no need for cleaning steps for either the carrier or the device wafer. WPA UVR 270, the UV release temporary bonding adhesive film, and WPA PRCL 350, peel release film, are compatible with wafer processing procedures like lithography, plating, and chemical processes. These films are melt conformable 
for high topographies up to 200 microns for bumped wafers. They're molecularly engineered to induce no interfacial stress, what we call stress-free materials, an important characteristic for fragile and thin wafers. They have the strength for back grinding and thinning as well, maintaining high shear bond strength to temperatures greater than 100 C. For high temperature processing, WPA UVR270 is stable up to 270 Celsius. Celsius with no degradation or outgassing. And when processing and when processing is finished, they can be removed with no residuals on the carrier or the device wafer. So this is just another look at their traditional bonding steps for temporary adhesive. This is the bonding process for WPA PRCL350 and WPA UVR270 adhesive films by AIT. No need to worry about changes in thickness or TTV from your spin coating process. These are low TTV adhesive films. By offering a low TTV film, AIT eliminates dispensing, spin coating, drying, and curing steps in the bonding process, helping to boost throughput. Just take your film, laminate it onto the carrier or device wafer, remove the release liner, and bond the carrier and device wafer together. Then you're ready to start processing or thinning. To bond the device wafer and carrier wafer, AIT recommends using a vacuum assisted heat press with parallel lamination plates. When laminated with heat and pressure, the adhesive films melt flow to encapsulate bumps up to 200 microns in height for maximum protection and support. So this is our recommended lamination procedure, but please feel free to reach out to a member of the AIT sales team. We're happy to work with you to find a solution for your application and setup. So again, we see the graphic of debonding with traditional temporary adhesive, with mechanical, laser, or solvent-assisted debonding, and the cleaning process for both the device wafer and the carrier wafer. The debonding and cleaning from traditional temporary bonding adhesives is one of the greatest obstacles to high throughput. Separating the carrier and device wafer can be time and resource consuming. Cleaning the residuals from both the device wafer and the carrier adds additional steps and time, further decreasing throughput and raising the cost of processing. AIT considered this heavily as it engineered new materials for wafer processing. For WPA UVR270 with a glass carrier, exposure to UV through the carrier will release the device wafer from the carrier wafer. Just gently pull them apart. The carrier will be free of all adhesive with no residues. Peel the remaining layer of UV cured film from the device and it peels off with no residuals. WPA PRCL350 has an even simpler process flow. Just ply the carrier and wafer and peel the adhesive from the device wafer. That's it. No UV, no laser, no solvents, and no cleaning required for the carrier or the wafer. Eliminating the need for a cleaning process is a critical component in boosting throughput. These materials have the chemical resistance and process compatibility necessary for wafer processing. Uh, they're high temperature stable, WPA UVR270 up to 270 Celsius and WPA PRCL350 up to 350 Celsius. The key for these materials is their clean release. 
no adhesive residuals will be left on the carrier or the device wafer after debonding. The next and final wafer processing solution from AIT we'll be discussing today is perhaps our most innovative and novel. It's a line of peel release clean adhesives on disposable carriers. The product line is called GDPRCL350. For GDPRCL350, the adhesive film comes pre-applied by AIT on a substrate that serves as a disposable carrier. The adhesive and the carrier come together. Using this product line completely eliminates the need for a reusable carrier. When you're done with the wafer, just peel it off and throw it out along with the carrier. This is a peel release clean adhesive. It leaves no residues on the device wafer after processing. So AIT offers GD PRCL 350 with three different options for disposable carrier. The three different products in the GD PRCL 350 product line are GD PRCL 350 WS, GD PRCL 350 SS, and GD PRCL 350 FG. They differ only by the substrate or the disposable carrier used for the adhesive. The specific product is chosen based on application to best match the CTE of the wafer and disposable carrier. GD PRCL 350 WS features the adhesive on a carrier with a CTE of seven. The SS version is the adhesive on a carrier with a CTE of 18, and the FG version is the adhesive on a carrier with CTE of 17. The GDPRCL350 product line features all of the throughput boosting advantages of the adhesive films discussed in the last section, plus now there's no reusable carrier to laminate and debond. Bond the product to the wafer, process the wafer, peel off the carrier with the adhesive, throw it out, and move on to the next wafer. Like the adhesive films mentioned in the last section, GDPRCL350 is compatible with wafer processing procedures and chemistries. It is low outgassing and stable up to 350 Celsius. The material is flexible, stress-free. It will not induce interfacial stress on your wafer, and to further mitigate the risk of stresses, the disposable carrier is selected to match the CTE of the device wafer. The melt-conformable adhesive will absorb and encapsulate bumps and studs. It has high shear bond strength and may be used for wafer backgrinding and thinning. The adhesive remains strong to temperatures greater than 100 Celsius. And of course, it peels off with no residuals. No cleaning of the device wafer is necessary. And in this case, there is no reusable carrier to worry about. Once again, we see the process for traditional temporary bonding adhesives with dispensing, spin coating, drying, and curing. Now we see the bonding process for GDPRCL350 products. AIT has eliminated another step. Because the adhesive comes on a disposable carrier, there is no step for laminating the adhesive onto a carrier. Simply take the adhesive film pre-applied on a disposable carrier and laminate to the device wafer. Then you're ready to go ahead with thinning, TSV creation, RDL layering, or whatever processing you need to do. This is the recommended lamination process for GDPRCL350 products. 
we see the disposable carrier in blue with the temporary adhesive in green pre-applied onto it. You recommend bonding to the device wafer with a vacuum assisted heat press with parallel laminating plates or using rolling lamination with heat. The adhesive layer on these low TTV films will melt flow to conform to even high topographies and protect features up to 200 microns in height. So again, this is the debonding process for traditional temporary bonding adhesives and the required cleaning steps. The debond GDPR CL350 products simply peel the adhesive on disposable carrier from the device wafer, throw it out, and move ahead with dicing, further processing, or whatever comes next. No consuming debonding procedure and no cleaning steps. This maximizes the throughput. No reusable carrier to worry about, just throw the adhesive out together with the disposable carrier. GDPRCL350 products feature the same chemical resistance and wafer processing, processing compatibility as our other temporary bonding films. They're stable for processing up to 350 C. What sets these apart is that the adhesive is pre-applied on a disposable carrier and when processing is finished, you can peel it off with no residuals left on the device wafer. This, oh. So now we'll move ahead to the next segment of our presentation, temporary bonding materials for wafer backgrinding and thinning. Some materials are easier to backgrind than others. Silicon is relatively soft and grinding is relatively easy. However, some materials like silicon carbide, sapphire, and three, five semiconductors may be very hard, very brittle, or both. Applications for materials like this are undergoing substantial growth, particularly for use in power semiconductor devices like IGBT and in optoelectronics. The market for power semiconductor devices featuring silicon carbide and gallium nitride is projected to quadruple over this decade. To grind materials like this, a special temporary bonding material is needed. So what's required of a temporary bonding adhesive for grinding these materials? What's different about the requirements for these compared to traditional silicon backgrinding? As I mentioned earlier, silicon is relatively soft. The strength requirements for temporary bonding materials are not as high. Standard backgrinding tape with peel strength around 200 grams per inch is generally adequate for these backgrinding applications. These tapes are usually backed with PVC or other soft materials that get very soft at high temperatures and may struggle with temperatures above 70 Celsius. For silicon backgrinding, this is okay because not that much heat is generated in the backgrinding process. Backgrinding hard, brittle materials like silicon carbide and 3.5 semiconductors require much higher shear force in the grinding process. Therefore, more shear bond strength is needed from the temporary bonding adhesive. They'll also generate more heat during the grind, leading to more significantly elevated temperatures. Standard back grinding tapes may not be able to take these high temperatures. Higher temperature resistance is needed. And these, these materials, like 3.5 semiconductors, may be fragile and brittle. The adhesive will have to be high strength to 
to ensure the materials aren't damaged during grinding. Besides the strength to withstand grinding and protect fragile materials, the temporary adhesive must be able to withstand etching processes for stress relief. And just as in wafer processing, the debonding and cleaning process is crucial to background throughput. Wax adhesives have been promoted by DISCO as a solution for back grinding difficult to grind materials. Because of their strength, there is little risk of breaking a wafer during back grinding. However, traditional back grinding waxes are difficult to apply consistently, leading to uniformity issues. And the wafer cleaning steps after grinding can be intensive and lead to wafer breakage. Wax solutions by AIT have the same advantages of high shear bond strength and temperature resistance, but without the issues commonly associated with wax. AIT produces wax in film format. They have low TTV and it eliminates the uniformity issues seen from other waxes. Waxes from AIT don't have a difficult debonding and cleaning process. They heat slide off of materials and wax residuals can be removed with a simple IPA wash. AIT waxes are conformable on application to encapsulate and protect bumps and other topographic features. Let's see specifically the wax and adhesive back grinding solutions from AIT. BGF 7090 and BGF 7160 are high bond strength wax films from AIT. They melt flow like liquid wax during bonding and debonding. This allows absorption of bumps during bonding and eliminates stress during debonding. AIT wax films are flexible. They eliminate interfacial stress on your wafer and enable you to use even a carrier with a mismatched CTE. They are low TTV and compatible with wet and dry etch that may be used for stress relief. To debond, they slide right off with elevated temperatures. Any residuals can be easily washed away with IPA. We recommend heat sliding at 180 C for BGF 7160 and 110C for BGF 7090. Besides wax solutions, AIT also offers high strength temporary adhesive films for back grinding applications. WPA PRCL 200 is a low TTV peel release adhesive film. It can be melt bonded at 140 to 160 Celsius. It'll melt flow like plastic during bonding. It is also compatible with dry etch for stress relief. It's molecularly engineered to be stress free, so it won't induce stress on your wafer. To debond, just peel apart the wafer and the carrier and peel the adhesive off and leave no residuals on your wafer or your carrier, eliminating any cleaning steps. So AIT has taken the same novel approach of adhesive on disposable carrier introduced earlier for wafer processing and applied this idea to temporary adhesive for back grinding. The temporary bonding material comes pre-applied on a disposable carrier. No spin coating, no drying, no carrier cleaning. AIT always provides these films with high uniformity and low TTV. For finished back grinding, debond. The carrier, the disposable carrier along with the temporary bonding material and throw them out. BISCO has actually designed equipment that they promote 
for use with disposable carrier type products. They particularly promote it for difficult to grind workpieces like silicon carbide. Wax back grinding films GD, BGF 7090 and GD, BGF 7160 are the same high uniformity, high bond strength wax films we discussed several slides ago, but these are pre-applied on disposable carrier. After back binding is finished, they can be debonded along with the disposable carrier with a low stress heat slide. Wax residuals can be cleaned from the wafer with IPA. Since there is no reusable carrier, there is no carrier cleaning step involved. GD WPA PRCL 200 is a back grinding temporary adhesive film that comes pre applied on disposable carrier. This low TTV film has high shear bond strength. It can be melt bonded at 140 to 160 C with calendar and heated rolls or heat press. It'll conform to topographies to encapsulate bumps. It's molecularly flexible to induce zero interfacial stress on any CTE non-matching carrier. When grinding's finished, simply peel the adhesive off along with the disposable carrier and your wafer is ready for further processing. There are no residuals, so no cleaning is needed. AIT offers several different temporary bonding wax films with different temperature resistance. They're all high strength, compatible with wet and dry etch, and can be debonded with a heat sliding method. The wax residuals can be cleaned off with IPA. AIT also offers high strength back grinding film adhesive. This is a peel release, peel release clean adhesive. To debond, just peel it off and it'll leave no residuals behind, eliminating the need for cleaning steps. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. And Damar, I'm handing the presentation back over to you.